Hello, welcome to Fork in the Loaf. My name is Heather, and today I'm going to be baking a plain old, I'm doing two loaves of plain old French bread. I'm not sourdoughing this. Um, I'm doing it kind of last minute. We're having dinner with um, our daughter and son-in-law, and we're having spaghetti. And so I thought French bread would be awesome to go with this, and I did not think to do sourdough last night. So we're gonna do French bread. And I'm going to use plain old white flour. I don't know if you can see that. We're gonna do plain old white flour. I've got some two cups of warm water. I've got some active dry yeast. It's the stuff. I get a big thing from Costco and then I just keep refilling my jar. We are gonna be adding some salt and I'm just gonna throw in some olive oil. I've got some sugar here. And let's go ahead and get started. So I, I need two and a half cups of warm water. This is two cups of warm water. It's not hot, it's just warm. It needs to be about 109, 110 degrees. Really, I just look for warm. I've done tap hot water, it works just fine. This is for my Berkey, so I had to kind of heat it up a little bit differently. Um, I have my Bosch out because I'm doing a double French bread loaf. And I'm gonna take a table, so that was two cups of warm water. I'm gonna add a tablespoon of active dry yeast. And I'm just gonna give it a quick little whoosh. Just to kind of get that incorporated a little bit. And I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of sugar. Uh, sugar is really good to help your yeast. It, it feeds your yeast. So I'm gonna add two tablespoons. This is an organic cane sugar from Costco. Give it another little whoosh. And I'm gonna let that sit there for about five, 10 minutes. So while that's proofing, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna put the salt and the oil in after it proofs. So I'm gonna get, I think it's called proofing. You are activating, that's what it's called, it's activating my, I'm activating my yeast. I'm gonna put six cups of flour in here. I could need five and a half. I'm betting I'm gonna need six. I am not, uh, I never perfectly measure. And the reason is because a lot of this is by feel. And sometimes your house, where you're from, there's more moisture. Where I'm from, it's really dry. I mean, it, there's so many things that can factor into how much flour you're gonna actually need. I'm gonna grab that half cup of water. All right, so I just wanted to show you what happened. So this has been sitting here a little over five minutes. I do have some bubbling happening but for as much yeast and water in here, this should be really bubbly. I can't even tell you how long I've had this stored in my refrigerator. I've been doing sourdough for years. And so normally, but normally I still used it. Um, apparently this one is no longer active. I should have way more bubbles than that. So I'm gonna just toss this. Oh, I think this is made, the production date looks like 714. And the best if used by date looks like 2016. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna dump this, clean this out. I'm gonna start with some fresh water. Okay, so that's the stuff from the freezer. And that white foamier stuff, that's looking better. I'm still a little worried that it's not enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and go open that brand new one that I've not even unsealed yet. We're gonna try that one. So I'll be right back. Okay, so this yeast, was made in two, September 2020. I don't know if you can see this. September of 2021, it says right there. And the best if used by, looks like it's 923, which means I got at least a year. I keep it in my freezer. It lasts longer than a year in the freezer. Um, but like that other one, that was years old. So um, I'm just gonna cut a small hole on one, see how there's like these little, um, these thingies. I'm just gonna cut a hole in one and it looks like I didn't even get below the, gotta get below that seal line. 
there we go. And then I can use that little hole to pour into my jar. And that jar, I'm gonna, jar will stay in my refrigerator. I just have to remember to use it more. I do use it sometimes for hamburger buns. I use it sometimes, like today I'm making French bread. Generally, I try to do sourdough for my family. Um, I don't like to eat fresh flour or raw flour. I, I like it fermented. But um, I won't be eating it like everybody else. I might have a piece of it. All right, so let's try this again. I got the two cups of warm water. I have the tablespoon of the new yeast. And I'm gonna add two tablespoons of sugar. Give it a Okay, so I don't know if you can tell quite as well as I can, but there's actually a foam on the surface of it. Now it's not just flat and bubbly. There's like a, like it's foamed. <laughs> I think if there was less water in it, it would be foamier, but I, this is what you're looking for, is that more of that foamy surface and not that flat surface with just a few bubbles. So to my yeast mixture, I'm gonna add a tablespoon of salt. I am not, I, I, I don't, um, I don't have problems with salt um, and I use a Himalayan pink or a Redmond's Reel, something that has like some nutritional value to it versus just a table. I don't ever use table salt. I'm just going to add a couple tablespoons of, of oil. I could use my thing or I could just eyeball it because it's not, um, it doesn't need to be measured and I'd rather not have to clean an oily tablespoon out. All right, and so I've got another half of a cup of water here. I'm gonna add that to this. And now I've got six cups of flour here. I'm gonna add probably about half of it because I know it's gonna take most of this and I'm making a mess. Uh, maybe a little bit more than half. <laughs> I got a little heavy handed. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix that in. Oh, I love the smell of yeast. One of the things that we're looking for when we're making our bread, we are looking for what looks like a ball of dough versus a batter. Like this is almost like a, a quick bread batter, not even like a, a bread dough. So we're gonna go ahead and add just a little bit more flour because we're getting pretty close. I have about a cup left in here, ish. And at this point, we are sticky. We don't want sticky. Um, we want it to be more like a bread dough, I, I, but not as dry as a bread dough. So I think I'm gonna add just a little bit more, like maybe half of this. We'll leave it right there. So, okay, so now we're looking, we're real wet in here still, but we're starting to come together. So I'm just gonna let this go. I, I think that I'm not gonna need that. I'm thinking five and a half cups is probably plenty. Um, this could be five cups, but I'm going to go ahead and let this rest. Um, I'm sorry. I'm going to go ahead and keep mixing this for about two or three minutes and then I'm going to come back. I'm going to check it out and, uh, I will bring you back then. Okay. So it looks like we are dealing with a dough that when we put it in our hands and roll it around, it's not sticking to our fingers. We don't quite have window pane yet. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set a timer for about 15 minutes. I'm gonna just let it sit here and do its thing, absorb its moisture, get hydrated, all that fun stuff, and I will be back in 15 minutes. Okay, so my timer just went off. It's been 15 minutes. 
I'm gonna go ahead and move your ca this camera over so you can see my countertop. Okay, so you're gonna wanna make sure your surface is clean. You know, sprinkle some flour, not a ton. That's probably about a tablespoon or two. We're gonna just pull this beautiful soft dough. It's been a long time since I've worked with yeasty dough and not sourdough. Not that there's a big difference as far as texture um, when you're working with it, but I'm going to cut this in half and I'm not, I can eyeball this about right here and I've greased my knife blade and I'm just gonna eyeball it in half. I'm gonna set half of it aside. And I'm gonna want to, I don't wanna work it too much, uh, but I do want to get this rolled out into a rectangle. And you're looking for the nicer side. You want that nicer side to be your outer edge. So see, this is kind of nicer looking than this side is. This is gonna be okay. I have faith in that. <laughs> We're looking for something about 14 inches long. It's 14 to 16. Um, and how, let's see, I don't know if you can see this. This curl, so you're gonna take your top and you're just gonna kinda wrap it around the bottom. And, oh man, this is not good. And again, over here, I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm just gonna wrap it around the bottom. I'm just kinda... Okay, and then I'm gonna do that with this one as well. I think what I'm gonna do with this one, I'm gonna make it into a nice ball first. I'm gonna make sure I have a nice tight surface. I'm gonna set that down. And I'm gonna roll this out to a, a rectangle. See how this has got these little, these little things in it? We don't want that on the outside. Okay. Again, we want it to be about 14 to 16 inches long. You want it a little bit more than a foot. This is probably closer to a foot right now. This stuff smells so good. I love yeasty bread. I just doesn't, it doesn't love me. Okay, so now I'm gonna fold this, roll it. You could go through and do that, but I think that the, um, the process of rising and stuff is gonna make that close up anyway. My first one, my second one. This one turned out much better. <laughs> and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna move all that grease down. Try not to cut, you're not, I'm not going against this. I'm pulling down. I'm just wanting to grease those edges. And I'm gonna put some diagonal cuts in here. Not super deep, they don't just need to be enough to where the bread has a chance to expand. Now I'm gonna grab my towel, I'm gonna go get it wet. I want it to be damp to put over this. So I got it wet and then I wrung out as much as I could. And this is one that's got holes in it, so it will be okay. And we will be back in 30 minutes to see how this is risen. So in a bowl, one of my chickens, it's they've gone through a, um, a molt and it's winter just started winter so they've slowed down in their egg production well one of my hands kind of just laid a very small pointy egg anyway so we're gonna use that um, using that smaller egg is actually kind of nice because then I don't have I don't waste so much egg because you don't ever need a like too much but I'm just gonna I love how dark my chickens eggs are I'm gonna add just a hint of water. 
I just added a splash. And we're gonna make an egg wash. And the egg wash is just to help these darken, get a nice pretty crust on them. Um, inside there. This actually took about 45 minutes. It might be because it's kind of cold in here. I mean, it's not it's not 80 degrees in here. It's only like, I don't know. I don't even know how hot it is in, or how cold it is in here. We don't keep our house super hot, which is hard for me sometimes because I have thyroid issues and sometimes cold is really hard for me. But... Love to have an electric stove, or I'm sorry, a uh, wood stove. Holy cow, a wood cook stove would be like my dream. They have some newer type, um, like wood stoves that you use to heat up your house that you can cook on. And uh, some of them even have like this little oven addition side to it. Uh, like it's got a little built-in oven or something. Kind of fun to have something like that. I think I love that traditional um, style cooking, like where it's not your conventional electric or even gas. I, I don't really, I would love a gas stove, but man, I love cooking out on my camp chef. I love cooking on open flame. Anyway, so I'm gonna go set this into the oven. We're gonna put these in the oven at 350 degrees. We're gonna check it in 30 minutes and see, make sure that it's up to temperature. And I will show you that when we get to that point. Um, at this point, you could also put like poppy seeds on top. You could put sesame seeds. You could put herbs. You could sprinkle some shredded Parmesan or Asiago cheese. You could do, this is the point where any kind of stuff that you might like on the top of it, this is when it would go on. If it's something that will burn, I would maybe not put it on yet, but this wet is what's gonna help hold it on. Oats on top of this is pretty, um, or like on a loaf of bread, it's pretty. I'm not sure about French bread. Um, you could put a little, like a mug of hot water into the oven with it, make sure it's oven safe. And that steam will help create a crispy, crunchier topping. I am not a big fan of the super crispy crust. So let's just see how we turn out with this and we'll be back in 30 minutes. Okay, so this has been 30 minutes at 350. I saw some people doing 375. I've seen some recipes call for, you know, do so many minutes at this 450 or 400 degrees and then drop it down. I just put it at 350 for 300. I'm sorry, 350 for 30. I got a nice crisp crust and I'm just gonna poke in there. I thought I turned this on. You're looking for Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. I'm gonna poke it in there. And you want this to be at about 200 degrees. Let's see, can you see it? And it's at 201. So those are done. And now we're just gonna let them sit here and cool. And when I slice into them, I'll show you the crumb and show you how, how cushy they are and how beautiful they are. So, um, That'll be closer to dinner time, so I'll be back. Okay, so the sun's coming in kind of weird, but there is my, um, I should, well, I'm gonna do this one this way. Let's cut a slice off. Can you see? Is it too bright? Yep. It's like beautiful. Okay. My husband is husband is making the dinner right now. Light's coming in weird. I'm really excited. I don't even know what it looks like. My husband's making dinner right now. Um, the light's coming in weird, but I just wanted to show you that it turned out gorgeous. 
Another pantry item. Another pantry item. Everything that I made this bread out of, I have on my shelves in my food storage. And it's, um, I mean, it's gorgeous. Like you can't, and it's not hard. It just takes time. And that's, that's the hardest part. So thank you for joining me on this adventure with Fork and the Loaf. Hit subscribe, share with your friends, share on your social media. Thank you. Have a great day.